got off track. So I will invite the uh, member from Rimby Rocky Mountain House. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is an honor to rise today, while certainly not for the first time in this assembly, uh, it's most definitely the first opportunity that I've had to respond to the throne speech. Here, here. I am both humbled and privileged to represent uh, my constituents in this chamber. I'm humbled and privileged by the opportunity my constituents have given me to serve on behalf of the good people of Rimby Rocky Mountain House Sundry. To begin, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank my family. Uh, my wife Tiffany is the love of my life. As I mentioned to you when I was introducing her earlier this week in this chamber, we started dating when I was about 16 years old, and we've now been married happily for 15 years. Uh, she is my moral compass, Mr. Speaker, and I strive to be the man that she thinks I am every day. I also want to thank our son Marcus, who's 19 years old this year, and our eight-year-old twins Austin and Cheyenne. Mr. Speaker, the lessons I have learned in life are dwarfed by the lessons I have learned in fatherhood. I love being a dad. To me, it is my most important job, and it will always be my favorite job. I know for my family, the time I spend away from them working is hard. I thank them for their steadfast support, and I want them to know that I am working hard to leave this province a better place for them, and I want them to be proud of me. I firmly, firmly believe, Mr. Speaker, that strong family, or families build strong communities, and that strong communities support strong families. These are the values that I was raised with. Almost 40 years ago, my father, Pat Nixon, arrived in Alberta a homeless teenager. At the time, my father was so deep in the prison of, prison of addiction that he would not even have dreamed about seeking the same opportunity that has drawn so many to this province. However, he did find his opportunity absolute and life-changing in serving others. In launching what would become the Mustard Seed, one of Canada's most respected non-for-profit non homeless organizations, My father not only reaffirmed his faith in the basic goodness of mankind, but set about changing lives for the better. Together with my mom, Lise, they dedicated their lives to living out their faith and helping the homeless population of this province. Along the way, they taught me and my five brothers, Jeremy, Daniel, Ryan, Tyler, and Shane, and that's what they'd have to do is say it fast like that to make sure we were all in the van, the true nature of service, introducing us to a much larger world at a very early age. Looking back, Mr. Speaker, at my father's journey, for me it really emphasizes how truly amazing Alberta and Canada are. My father went from being an involuntary guest of the Attorney General at times, to eventually being a distinguished guest of the Governor General of Canada and the Lieutenant Governor of Alberta, receiving the Order of Canada and the Alberta Order of Excellence. He and my mother's unwavering dedication to help their neighbours has always inspired me. To help those in need in your community is something we all should strive to do each day, Mr. Speaker. My over 30 years of involvement working with the Mustard Seed has had a profound effect on my life. Whether serving soup as a boy in the meal line or serving as the executive director as a man, for me, growing up with the Mustard Seed meant learning the difference between helping others and helping others, helping others help themselves. Both are vital, Mr. Speaker. I look forward to applying this principle as a member of the 29th Legislature. I also want to assure you, Mr. Speaker, that I come to this House fully aware of the primary responsibility to which I have been entrusted, representing the good people of Rimby, Rocky Mountain House Sundry, to the best of my abilities. I pledge to be a strong advocate for a region which includes over 40,000 of the province's most honest and hardest working citizens spread across 25,000 square kilometres of the finest country on God's green earth. Our communities are proud communities with a long history of electing strong, uncompromising leaders. <coughs> Premier John E. Brownlee represented this region, as did the first woman appointed to Alberta's cabinet, our Irene Parlaby. Our, over time, our region also elected longtime official opposition leader Bob Clark and my good friend Ty Lyon, who served this assembly for over 20 years. And who can forget, Mr. Speaker, Democratic reformer, member of parliament, my good friend Myron Thompson, who continues to serve the people of Sundry as a town councillor to this very day, almost 50 years of community service. We are also home to a proud First Nation peoples, including the Ochis, the Sunchild, and the Stoney. However, the fact is our communities, like many across rural Alberta, have gone ignored by successive governments that have turned their backs on conservative values that make Alberta strong. The largest urban municipality in our riding is Rocky Mountain House. It serves a regional district of more than 30,000 Albertans, with over a million Albertans visiting a year. 
Expanding medical service in this region is long overdue. Rocky Mountain House has been promised a hospital for many years and has been told for many years that they are on the top of the priority list. But sadly, it still has not happened, Mr. Speaker. It needs to happen. Rocky Mountain House needs a new hospital. Meanwhile, in Sundry, local citizens have experienced the devastating effects of flooding on several occasions, yet remain at the end of the line every time mitigation projects are considered. Mr. Speaker, when it comes to basic infrastructure, all municipalities in our constituency and across Alberta would greatly benefit from the certainty of long-term predictable funding. Nowhere would certainly would that be more appreciated than Rimby, where the community continues to depend on wooden pipes. Mr. Speaker, wooden pipes. The politics needs to be removed from infrastructure funding. It needs to happen now for the long-term success of our communities. For the first time in 44 years, we have a new government here in Edmonton, and I truly had hoped this government would take a different approach. However, if the recent throne speech and the government policies are any indication, it seems I will have my work cut out for me, helping this new government understand rural issues. Communities like Rocky Mountain House, Caroline, Nordig and Sundry are significantly supported by Alberta's energy industry for employment and economic activities. The government's promised royalty review, which is taking place now, is already damaging confidence and killing jobs in my communities. I hear from people daily, both employees and employers, about unemployment and the effects of this government's policy on our industries. Meanwhile, Alberta's second largest industry, agriculture, remains vital for communities like Bentley, Rimby and Eckville, yet this vital industry was completely ignored in this government's throne speech. As a representative for Rimby, Rocky Mountain House, Sundry, I consider it my privilege to provide this government with a robust education on rural concerns. In addition, as both the official opposition whip and the critic for democracy and accountability, I am dedicated to advocating for the long overdue changes Albertans deserve. For far too long, successive governments have diminished the role of the individual member of this Legislative Assembly. Over the better part of a decade, the previous government tied itself in knots to avoid democratic reform, sometimes going to great lengths to prevent the systematic change necessary to ensure tr true accountability. In the case of fixed election dates, the previous government implemented a faulty half-measure that broke the spirit of the law at the first possible opportunity. In the case of implementing the public right to recall failed MLAs, several previous administrations rejected the notion outright, all the while MLA compensation increased, citizen frustration increased, and voter engagement dwindled. Rather than truly address the democratic deficit, previous administrations chose to further centralize the power in the executive under the misguided belief that somehow increased increasing the government's capability or that it somehow increased the government's capability to operate quality services more efficiently. History has proven this line of thinking to be patently false. Without accountability to the public, those managing our province led us to a place where our province spent 20 percent more than the Canadian average while providing below average service. Deficits have increased, debt is increasing, and bureaucratic red tape is increasing. Rather than a new birth of freedom, Albertans were ignored in favour of government of the cronies, by the cronies, for the cronies. I could offer, if I could offer one piece of advice to my fellow members, it is this. Alberta is a business, and all indications are that our company is in trouble. The time for listening to managers is over, Mr. Speaker. The time for listening to our customers has arrived. It's time to get back to representative, representative democracy principles that have made Alberta strong. We as MLAs were elected to represent the people and the interests of our constituencies first. This means giving voters more opportunity to engage in our democracy and ensuring that governments are held accountable not just on election day but every day. It is not enough to simply call for reform. We need to implement it in a practical sense. We need to show a new generation of Albertans how great debate can be used to bring people together in a common cause. We need to demonstrate for all Canadians that empowering citizens makes our democracy stronger. Like previous generations, we need to verify for the world that democracy and freedom are entwined for all time and that freedom is not a weakness, indeed, it is our greatest strength. In this regard, I commend the government for passing legislation to ban corporate and union donations. I was proud to vote for that bill. This is a first good step. But it is only one step, and we need to continue to work to preserve our democracy and improve the accountability in government. I look forward to working with all members of this House and bringing about change and standing up for all burdens. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.